I shall now sing before fire to friends and enemies, to believers and heretics. I shall sing of a man, a friend not just of myself, but of all. This song I sing begins five years to this day. A man they called Dralius was taken before a fire much like this one. He was told to confess to crimes, great and small, of enlightening the men of Mundi with knowledge of their eternal gods. Welcome back to The Lore of the Vanquished Dominion, a series exploring my very own fantasy world and its many fascinating details. In this epic saga of an episode, we will be ascending to the realm of the gods to discuss religion. As in our own world, religion is a very, very hard word to define, but generally it indicates a belief in the supernatural, whether that be spirits, souls, or anything else that is seen as outside of the purview of science. Also, as in our own world, there are many religions, or rather, interpretations of such, as there are people. In light of that, we will go through only the in-universe equivalents of the five major religions of the world, these being the most important faiths throughout history. Another note before we begin. Unlike many fantasy worlds, the gods are not proven to exist. While most people believe in at least one of them, they are about as obvious as in our own world, so do without what you will. Now, let us be enlightened with the knowledge of the veritable belief systems in Magnets. Sylvanism, a religion named after the main god of this faith, Sylvain, who along with the other three gods created the world in opposition to the chaos god Sirog. The religion highly venerates the Book of Sylvain, a compilation of ancient texts said to be composed by the legendary Dralius. It is polytheistic, with different gods being venerated and prayed to for different reasons. It believes in three disparate afterlives, with different gods ruling over each. The Sylvan Sphere is a land of pure light, where the pious and righteous go. Heaven is where non-adherents or the morally neutral go. Umbra, also called Hell or Crushmore, is where the faithful of Sirag go along with those of pure evil. Those in Umbra will also eventually turn into demons, evil spirits that serve Sirag exclusively. Sylvanism functions as a fairly fundamentalist but syncretic religion, with relabeling of the deities of other faiths being common. The faith is also apocalyptic, believing, somewhat rightly, that the return of Sirog shall occur three times, and that the prophecy of the Triuptiwum must be fulfilled each time, with heroes from every people coming together to defeat the god of evil. To understand the rest of Sylvanism, you must understand what is known as the Creed of Cranel, named after the city where the legendary Dralius was born. While not followed to a T by all sects of the religion, it is important to the core beliefs of every sect. I believe in the four gods, all equal in power and influence. In Sylvain, god of fire and life, in Vapis, god of wind and weather, in Osaurus, god of earth and magic, and in Iela, goddess of water and rage. I also believe in Dralius, the human, as the prophet of the gods, through him was spoken the book and the word, and Anu did the gods charge to proselytize that word. I believe in Sirog, the god of chaos and deceit, his power equal to the four combined. I believe in his influence and hatred, and that he may find his enemy in me. I believe in one church, one creed, and one faith. I believe that if this creed is followed, and my beliefs be sound, I may be spared the darkness of Umbra. So help me gods. Now that we have the context of the creed, let's hear that creation story. After Sirog created the Morphane, the gods were chased out of heaven and created the world to escape. After creating the peoples and joining forces through love and companionship, the gods were forced to face Sirog again. He killed all but Sylvain, and the fire god managed to take them both out at the same time. The gods banished Sirog to hell and continue to watch over the world. Now, we can look at the sects or denominations of the religion. Crinolists. The mainline denomination, Crinolists are named after the creed they follow and hold to the teachings of the gods as channeled through Dralius, who they believe to have been a human. Magisterians. A more mystical sect of Sylvanism, the Magisterians grew out of a movement towards magic as a form of ritual. While they still followed the creed of Crinel, they see Dralius, while still a human, as a powerful mage 
who used the magic of the gods to raise the dead in the Battle of the Passage. Stegayan Adherents The Stegayan Adherents, or simply Adherents, are a majority elven group of believers that see Dralius as having been a Stegayan elf, and so have worked more Soraki ideas into their faith, such as ancestor worship. Founded by the ambassador to Stegaya, Bravan, they are seen by the other denominations as heretical and anti cornelian Yet, they still hold to a version of the creed, just without the De Humanus verse. Syrogists. Similar to the Magisterians, the Syrogists, called internally the Songromancers, are a more mystical sect of Sylvanism, yet they focus on blood magic. Seen as evil by the rest of the religion, they also hold a fascination, if not a reverence, for Syrog as a teacher of the holy rite of Songromancy, or blood magic. After that disconcerting ending, let's move to our next religion, Ruinism. An omnipotent, non-gendered, omniscient being created the universe by mining into a celestial stone and carving out the world. Similar to old human religions, this Triomni being is the true lord of all the world and everything it represents. It varies between sects from henotheistic, meaning many gods but only worshipping one, to monotheistic, meaning one god. But the one thing that every sect can agree upon is the existence of the god Rui. It espouses a belief in reincarnation, but afterlives are sometimes a feature, with an equivalent to the Sylvanist heaven being the most common. It is the most ancient religion on Magnius, being with the Dwarven people throughout all of recorded history. Like Sylvanism, it is also fundamentalist and creedal, so to understand the denominations, we must go through another creed, the Code of the Scrolls. Believe only in one, and one above all others. Believe that he may be she, and she may be he. Believe that we came from the ground, and to it do we return. Believe that those who lived among us live among us still. Believe in the five seats, the five cities, the five scrolls. Believe in the wind and the rain and the king. Believe in the stone and the tears and the dirt. Believe these things for a life anew, one after one and one after another. Are you ready for another creation story? Because I certainly am. Rui began mining out the universe and created dwarves as his helpers, made of pure stone. Soon, the dwarves became too small and weak for his purposes, and he created humans. After several years of his helpers becoming too weak, Rui assigned each of his helpers to forge out their own world. He gave dwarves his most prized hammer and taught them to forge metal so they could rule the world. He told them that if they ever became strong enough, he would adopt them as helpers again, but he would watch over them and tell them. Did I hear someone say denominations? Volume. The first of the two major cities, or seats of Ruinism, Valdor has its own unique theology that resembles a form of the religion when it was more henotheistic and connected to Sylvanism. This form equates Ruri with the Sylvanist god Vapis, and doesn't deny that the other gods of Sylvanism may exist. They still follow the creed and the teaching of the Five Scrolls, but with alterations provided by contact and integration with the Third Larcanian Empire and later Brienic kingdoms. Morion. The other major sect of Ruinism has its origins with the Dwarven Diaspora from Coleus and the subsequent settling of Morival, called Castlefall at the time. This tradition sets itself apart by being more strictly monotheistic and adopting a fundamentalist philosophy which has aided in the subjugation and conquest of the continent. Next religion! Next religion! Anor Kaisemu. Anor Kaisemu, more commonly referred to by the exonym Elvindu, follows the structure of personal freedom, and that there are many ways to achieve everlasting happiness. The ways are numerous and almost infinite, with everyone encouraged to find their own path. There is no official holy book for Elvindu, yet many followers would call the writings of Seca, daughter of the mythological Sek, a guide for how to live your life. It lays down some basic rules on how to achieve everlasting happiness. There are no gods in this religion, but many enlightened beings are seen as powerful and may be revered as such echoing the more ancient Soraki-inspired religion which Elvindu stemmed from. It believes in reincarnation with intent, the end goal being a sort of godhood only achieved by a scarce few. It is also votive, meaning it's more concerned with what followers do rather than what they believe. It is fairly legalistic too, so we'll cover a few important laws or sayings. One must be reticent to fight 
unless the fires of home are threatened. One must find a path through those that have come before, so as to inform those that come after. Nature, in all its beauty and grace, is eternal and supreme. Who's ready for a creation story? The world was formed from the union of soul and material, giving life to a dead planet. Soul was able to travel between life and the world and reach an equilibrium. But soon that equality was broken and material won, with soul retreating to the far corners of the sky. Every spirit or life searches for soul through their many forms until they can find it and reunite to bring a spiritual equality to the world once again. Denominations. Danekau. Their name translating to those who understand, the Danekau are the more mainstream of the two primary branches of the religion. They believe that the law is binding, but not unchanging, and are often seen as much more progressive than the other denomination. While seen as barbaric by outsiders, they are known for hosting large orgies and cacophonous festivals during the yearly harvest, so they're pretty fun. Semtoku. Literally translating to of the spirits, the Semtoku are the more fundamentalist and traditionalist sect of Elvindu that have retained many Soraki traditions, and worship a set of spirits that consist of ancestors and some of the gods from the ancient Soraki religion. I cast next religion! Sakidau. Sakidau, the call of Dhuva or Dhuvism, is the main folk religion of the orcs. It mainly worships the goddess Dhuva, also called the matron or the guide, therefore being henotheistic. She is the one who is said to have led the orcs from the divine hunting grounds, Vavikonava, to Magnius, after the other gods grew tired of the orcs' constant squabbles and warfare. Dhuva then became the first king or matron, as she is still called. She united the orcs into one banner and creed, bringing the other gods around to her cause. She is still revered as the divine matron and the true power of the royal seat. Dhuva is said to have led great conquests and brought many disparate clans under her empire. Eventually, she left the world, but is said to still keep vigil over the orcs, and will intervene if her children divide themselves again. They believe in an afterlife of returning to the hunting grounds to pester other gods and fight an eternal battle. Like Elvindu, this faith is votive, but, like other parts of Orcan society, is heavily legalistic. We'll go through some prominent laws, and then the denominations. Murder against another orc is to be punished most severely, yet outsiders are not orcs. Robbery, thievery, larceny, pickpocketing, or stealing are punishable by death, outsiders and orcs alike. The matron is supreme, and her word art law. Ah, yes, the good old organ legal system, just fine with murder, but seeing the need to execute robbers. <sighs> Let's just hear that creation story. The orcs were born in the divine hunting grounds of Vavikunava, where they hunted and squabbled for centuries. The other gods grew tired of this and asked Dhuva, the goddess of war, to throw them out of Vavikunava. Being quite fond of the orcs, she instead led them to another realm, called Magnius. She ruled over her adopted children like a mother or a matron, and united them into one clan, Bragvar. Eventually, she left, but promised to always guide them and return one day to reunite all orcs into one clan once again. Let's have a look at those denominations. Kika. The main sect in Bragvar, this philosophy tends to be more spiritual and mystical, focusing on connection with the divine through prayer and reverence for the matron. It tends to be more conservative and monarchist, rejecting more council-based forms of government as seen elsewhere on the continent. Vasaka. Literally meaning the hunter's life, Vasaka is more pragmatic, liberal, and practical, often rejecting more abstract concepts like the divinity of the matron and the existence of other gods. It dominates the Orcan exclaves in Coleus and is popular among younger or more mixed orcs of all communities. You know, if I didn't have to go through the Orcan legal system for stealing 200 gold, then I'd think that last one sounded kind of nice. Anyway, moving on. Soraki, an ancient religion that worships many gods, most styled in the form of certain animals. The Soraki civilization seemed to be obsessed with death and the afterlife. Therefore, their religion is no different. The afterlife of Soraki is a twilight field, leading many to identify it with a Sylvanist heaven. The religion is the most heavily polytheistic, 
with there being around 15 main deities, and possibly hundreds of others. It is also matriarchal, an uncommon feature among human religions. Many modern religions derive from this, including Elvindu, Sylvanism, and even possibly Sakidaru. It is, once again, a votive religion that has prominent laws that are all geared towards allowing a soul to enter the fields of the dead. I'll read a few laws, and then we'll explore the one remaining denomination of Soraki. If not feathered, one may not fly. But adorned with the right tools and people, anyone can rise to challenge a mortal king, or even the very gods. The woman, most beautiful and most powerful, the carrier and originator of us all, is to be the leader in all things mortal and divine. You would do well to remember that the past is simply prologue, and life is simply a stepping stone. Now to the epic creation story. At first, there existed only Bresim and Dresim, the gods of the deep. They created a family of gods that were so unruly that Bresim resolved to destroy them. Rebellion and chaos ensued. Among the deities was On, the god of power and storms. The great red dragon Tiamat embarked on a course of destruction and was slain by On, who cut her in three, and used her carcass to create the universe. Out of her wings he fashioned the sky, out of her body he fashioned the world, and out of her head was fashioned humanity and the races of the world to help the gods. And now to cover the last vestiges of Soraki. Lurayan. The single remaining denomination and group in general of the religion is a sect of elven priestesses on the island of Lurae. They follow a traditional version of the religion that has been warped by time and shifts in elven culture to produce a syncretic faith that incorporates elements of Elvindu into its core doctrines while maintaining a basic reverence for the gods. And now to our final major religion, though calling it major may be giving it just a little bit too much credit. Dracafides, a unique religion that spawned from a mix of Sylvanism with mystic and Paleosaurian elements, Dracafides was started by the exiled Larkhan of the Second Larkanian Empire, after he set out to kill a dragon but instead encountered a lone Paleosaur, who told him of the divinity of dragons and how they are sacred animals. The Larkhan took this knowledge and spread it to the world, riding atop the dragon Victorus. He created a religion centered around the ancient Paleosaurs, casting them as gods on Magnus, and the window between humans and the divine dragons. The king of the dragons, Aiter, is identified with the Sylvanist god Vapis. Most of the other gods are similarly identified with those of other cultures. It believes in no firm afterlife, but a form of each Sylvanist one is a common belief. It's another creedal religion, following the so-called Giant's Tower Decree. The Ancient Ones left us scarce evidence, yet they believed many things. We should strive to believe the same. We believe in Aiter, Ina, and Squama, three gods but one world. Squama to create, Ina to destroy, Aiter to keep the balance. The exalted, the ancients, the Sanlagi, the first sapient and last pure people. By the gods ordained to spread the word, in them do we believe, and by their example do we live. And now, for the final time, the creation story. Settle in, this is a long one. At first, there was only Aiter in the heavens. But they grew lonely and sad with the infant darkness, so Aiter breathed the first fire and created Ina. Ina set about creating a world of lava, fire, and evil. Aiter tried to create life on this world, but found it was too hot and unforgiving. So they snuffed it out and banished Ina. Then they used their mind to create Squama. He set about creating a world of water, ice, and pure goodness. Aiter tried to create life here, but found that it couldn't take hold in the cold and purity of this world. So they banished Squama. But Aiter still wished for life and companions. So they examined what had gone wrong on the other worlds, and realized that they needed a balance between the two. So they freed Ina and Squama, and set them to combine their forces. Together, they created a perfect world, a balance between good and evil, hot and cold. Aiter created life, and it formed itself into dragons and humans. The wars nearly ruined the world as Ina and Squama took sides. Ina with the dragons, Squama with the humans. Aiter had to stop this. So he got them together and told Ina and Squama to find a balance. After many centuries of thinking, 
The gods combine the humans and dragons into a perfect species, the dragonborn, the paleosaurs. Together, the paleosaurs could control both humans and dragons, so there was peace. But soon, Ina and Skrama were at it again, rejecting Aetair's perfect creations. In the end, most paleosaurs died, and the world was left in an eternal struggle between light and dark, with Aetair now powerless to mediate. But if his protectors and power can be restored, he can bring peace back to the world. And now for our final look at some denominations. The Deists. The primary denomination of Dracafides, the Deists are defined by their namesake in that they believe in the creation of the world by the three gods, but that the gods left the world alone after the War of the Dawn. Ordained. The other, smaller faction of Dracafides believes in a more traditionally polytheistic view of the gods that take an active role in the mortal world. Their name originates from the idea that history is preordained, leading to many of the ordained being skeptical of the concept of free will. That was all of the major religions of Magnius. As you can see, there are rough equivalents to the religions of our own world, with some more fantastical concepts thrown in. Religion is, of course, a heavy topic, but plays a large role in magic, society, international relations, and naturally, in history. Speaking of that, I think with our explorations into the basics of the world, geography, peoples, and religion, it's time to delve into that history. Thus shall begin a mini-series within this series, an exploration of the long and varied periods of various societies rising, peaking, and falling once more to dust. If you enjoyed this video, then please consider liking and subscribing. And may Sylvain protect the hearth, may Ella bring you the storm, may Vapis slay the earth, may Asaurus plant the fields, and may Sirog leave you be. See you next time. Thank you.